Kembo, 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 na tatanzambi ya manzulu. Kinfumu kia kujisa. Greetings to all the Bento family all over the world. To the dispersed and outcast of Isolele. In the eastern and western hemisphere, <coughs> I pray the blessings of Tatanzambi. The blessings of the Most High upon you, wherever you are in this world. Hallelujah. Now, welcome to another... Uh, live episode with uh, Nabi Kefa. I hope you had a wonderful weekend as the week, the new week has started. Many of us are back to work, right? Um, okay, now first things first, if you came in into this live feed, please like and share this video. Yes, please like and share. Invite some uh, other brothers and sisters to come in and to join us. <clears throat> we'll be talking today about Abraham and uh, Abraham Kemet and the promise. In Geta, we're going to talk about Abraham Kemet, Egypt, Kamata, and the promise. The promise which was made to Abraham, yes, aka the covenant. The promise. <clears throat> so we're going to look into that just shortly i will not go into it uh, into the very depth of it but we will touch some certain things here and there so invite some people come in hallelujah and greetings to you all Now, let's start, okay? Let's start, hallelujah, let me know how you're doing. Write something in the chat, let me know you're watching, all right? So, write something in the chat, let me know you're here and you're ready for our discussion of today. Yes, um, unfortunately, I'm not on StreamYard at this very moment, so I cannot share my I cannot share the link for you to join in this conversation. So I will invite you to comment as much uh, as possible in the chat, right? Ask your questions in the chat, comment in the chat, just be engaged in the chat. I think today's lesson, today's live class uh, here on YouTube, yes, I think it uh, will be interested, interesting. Yes, it will be interesting. Uh, so be engaging in the chat. Okay, so let me know you're watching. Let me know you're here. Write something in the chat. Greetings to uh, Regilio P. Uh, peace be unto you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Matondo. Hallelujah. All right. All right. All right. So take a moment to like the video, people. Just like the video before we start, you know, like and share. Okay, like and share so we can uh, so we can kick off. Hallelujah, Mbote, Mbote. We are living in uh, in very prophetic times. Yes, we are living in prophetic times. A lot of things are happening. A lot of things are going on. Um, we are seeing the spiritual awakening increasing uh, even extending to african presidents you know who are becoming aware of certain things and it will continue to increase and in the future we will also see the economic independence of african nations okay it will happen and finally, we will be political independent. We will not rule our nations anymore. Africa will not rule itself any longer by um, the European standard or even the European way of government. But they will return to their own 
way, traditional way of governing the people. So we will never uh, democratic nations in the sense of, you know, as we have it defined by the Europeans, but the Africans were always um, under a kingship, you know, we always had king kingdoms in Africa, kingdoms. That's the way we were governed, kingdoms, hallelujah, even the 12 tribes, you know, if you... I will do a video about that, about the 12 tribes, and to show you that the 12 tribes were also 12 kingdoms in Africa, okay, in Africa. And all those kingdoms paid allegiance to the king of Congo. Yes, I will do a video in the future. I don't know when, but in the future I will do a video showing you exactly this. Okay, now good. To start, I want to look into the Hebrew word, into the word Hebrew itself. Okay, this word Hebrew, according to uh, the Bible, is derived from Eber. Yes, Eber, who was the son of uh, Sam. Eber. Yeah, from Eber, we have this word Hebrew. But Hebrew, the word Hebrew is identical with the word Apri, which is an Egyptian word. Yeah, so it's identical with the word Apri, which is uh, an Egyptian word. <clears throat> Which was found, um, which was found during the reign of Tutmosis the Third. Yes, Tutmosis III, Tutmosis the Third. So the 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 word Hebrew is identical with the Egyptian word Apri, found. In this inscription, at the least as early as the reign of Tutmosis the third. Very interesting. Now, it apri, eh? apri, is very close with um, abri. Yes, because the b and the p in Bantu are interchangeable, and in Semitic languages they are interchangeable. So we have the Egyptian Apri, we have the uh, Swahili Apri, the Kikuyu uh, Afri, and they are all the same. Yes, and they are all the same. Now, to break it down for you, let's start with um, the, the Egyptian Apri. The Egyptian Apri is identified or identical with the word in with the word Hebrew, yes? So in Egyptian, the, the word for Hebrew is spelled Apri. Apri. Well, it's not, it's a wrong note. <clears throat> yes, I have, um, I have two notebooks, yes? And I will uh, read from all two notebooks, okay? <laughs> what I will discuss is in these two notebooks, some things that I've written down to uh, to organize my thoughts okay so we have the Egyptian Apri which is identical with the Hebrew word Hebrew yes Eber Heber right the, that's the Hebrew Heber Eber is identical with the Egyptian Apri and we have the Swahili Abri, which comes from Habari, yes, so you have Abri, Habari, which means news. Habari in the Swahili means news, yes, to announce something. Now, in the Kikuyu, we have the word Abri or Afri, which means black man. Yes, black man. Very interesting. Abri, Ibri, 
Yes, every are all saying the same in Bento languages. Black man, or according to the Swahili um, meaning of the word, habari, to bring news or to announce something. Okay. Now another thing is the follow. The word Zion. Yes, in the Bible, Zion. Zion occurs over 150 times in the Bible. Zion, Zion. Yes, but for some reason, this name as a synonym for Jerusalem has not been explained. Its origin actually points to a link with Egypt. Very strange, but its origin actually points to a link with Egypt. Zion, Zione, 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 as it is written in the Hebrew. <coughs> Give me a moment, let me, let me share my screen. moment please how oh, new I'm open up a document no it's not it new Okay. Yes, I got it. See if I can share. Yes, I think you can all see this. Let me uh, write it in big, huge letters so everyone can read it easily. Yes, yeah, so we have Scion. Right, it's too small. Yeah, this this better. Yes, yeah, so we have Sion. Yes. Sion. Yes, Sion. All right. Now you, we see here Sion. It is Zion, which is uh, the Egyptian spelling, right? The Egyptian spelling, it's Zion. And you have the C, and C stands for the land. Yes, it stands for land from the Egyptian language, ancient Egyptian language. And C stands for land. Now, when we divide the Hebrew word Zion at the top, right? And C yon and we divide here see yon it's the same thing okay, follow me it's the same thing so you have the hebrew at the top let me uh, make it like blue so we have the the hebrew at the top sion sion we have the egyptian and sion it's the same and then C in Egyptian means land or a land, a dry land, like a desert. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let me just put land. 
And we have Kikongo, Nsi, Nsi, which also means what? Who knows? Land. Okay? But the Egyptian Nsi refers to a land uh, of drought, like a desert. Yeah, so in the Egyptian, the Nsi uh, represents a land like a desert. In the Kikongo, Nsi just means the land, you know, like a country, the land where the people live. So we see the similarity here. Yes, we see the similarity with the Hebrew. Yes, the Hebrew Sion, Sione. <clears throat> uh, po, po, po. Um, okay, here. Sione. And see on see on strong's h 7865 see on see on see on lofty another name for mount hermon see on <laughs> lofty oh my goodness oh 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 which is associated with Mount Hermon, yes, Mount Hermon. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> um, so you have to divide <clears throat> because the word Sion is constructed of two words, and see and on, right? Like we said, and see on is constructed of two words. You have and see, which is pointing to a land, yes, a land or a desert land. So we have the Egyptian and see. We have the Kikongo Nsi. It's the same thing. Bo both pointing to a land. Hmm? Hallelujah. So pay attention. Sion and Sion are built up, yeah, constructed of two words. We have Nsi, which points to a land, a geographic place, right? A land. Okay, geographic place, a land, and sea, it's land, and Sion, Sion, a land. <laughs> oh, yo, 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 yo. Just, just follow me, okay? So when we, we, we have defined and sea, yes? We have defined and sea, it means a land, and sea, and sea. In Egyptian, Kikongo, it's the same thing. It, it's pointing to a land. Okay, now on, what is on? Yes, on S S M S. On points to a holy place amongst the Egyptian. Okay. It points to a holy place. And we will see what a place is. Look at this. Pay attention now, okay? And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Safanat Panea. And he gave him to wife Asanat, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of on on it's the second part of the word see on see on <laughs> yeah it's, it is crazy okay and joseph went out over all the land of egypt yes and see on Yes, see on Zion. 
That's what we're dealing with. Now, when we open up this word and we look at and we look at it, well, let me go down. The priest of on. I did a video entitled Joseph and Asana, the daughter of the priest of On. Watch that video. Okay, On of Egyptian derivation. Okay, On of Egyptian derivation. City in Lower Egypt, bordering land of Gosen. Center of sun worship, resident of Potiphera, priest of On, and the father in law of Moses. Hallelujah. Um, city in Lower Egypt, probably on the border of land of Gosen, residence of Potiphera, priest of On. All right. Wait a minute. Yes. So on, where is it? You hear on deals with a temple. Okay, on it's a temple. It deals with a temple. Now that temple is called amongst the Egyptian the temple of the sun, okay? and the sun in Hebrew is semes. Yes, Semes. Okay. So you have Semes, you have SM, okay, which is Semi, you have SM, which is also Sema, you have SM can also be MS, uh, which is Mosi, and MS, uh, which is Mos. Yes. Now to explain, On is identified with the temple amongst the Egyptian. It deals with the temple of On, or also understood as the temple of the sun. Semes, yes, which is sun in Hebrew. Sm, which is Semi, the creator is called Semi to create Kisemi. Sema, SM, Sema, which is what uh, Sema is, the seed, yes, semen, semen, Sema, seed, semen in English, seed or sperm. MS, when you uh, turn the letters, reverse the letters, you have MS, Morsi, which means one, yes, unity, one. The Lord is our God. He is one. Echad in Hebrew. One. Mosi. For Mosi. Okay. Mos in, in uh, MS is also Mos in Egyptian. Which points to a child. Yes. Child. Now. I have given you all this for a reason. Yes. To build some foundation on what I will share right now yes as we continue so I've given you all that to give you a, some sort of a foundation so in the Egyptian uh, Zion let me say the origin of the word Zion is connected with the Egyptian Zion, Zion yes Zion so Zion is not originally a Hebrew word. You see? So Zion, 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 and C is land, on is a temple. And according to the Egyptian, and let me show you, and oh, I have to share my screen. Yes, when we go back, you see, it points. Um, to a mountain, yes, Sion, it says, is a mountain place. Now, the mountain place rested the temples, yes, the temple was situated on a mountain. 
but when we go through the definition of on what we read in Genesis 41 which says that Potiphera the father-in-law of Joseph was the priest of on we read the following yes Here, a city in Lower Egypt, probably on border of land of Goshen. And we know that the Israelites resided where? In Goshen, right? Because Pharaoh, as Jacob came with all his family, they received a land in Goshen. Resident of Potiphera, priest of On father-in-law of who Joseph right ancient city of Egypt uh, called also by the Hebrews from a tr translation of the name uh, Semes uh, something by the Greeks Heliopolis Yes, by the Arabs is to say foundation of the sun. So the Greek called it what? Heliopolis. Heliopolis. Let's go to Jeremiah uh, 43 13. He shall break also the images of Betsamar that is in the land of Egypt and the house of the gods of the Egyptians shall be burned with fire. Uh, no, that's not it. Now, Egypt is also called what? Mizraim, right? Okay. Now here, bet semes, right? Bet semes. <clears throat> That's how it is called. Bet semes, the house of the sun. Now, according to the Egyptian, the house of the sun was called Heliopolis because it was actually the temple of On. Yes, the house of the sun. Now, according to what we have received in church, you know, and what we have been taught, etc. Everything Egyptian is what? Demonic, right? So when we're dealing with Egyptian and the way they worship and the gods, um, they presented in their religion system or whatever, Everything is demonic, 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 and you have nothing to do with Egypt. Okay. No problem. But we don't, but we forget that religion itself, the foundation of religions, all religions, came from Egypt. And Christianity is an evolution of the Egyptian religion. So in the Hebrew, the temple, yes, and Sione, Sione is called Bet Semes. Yes. The house of the sun or the temple of the sun. Sione is called Bet Semes in the Hebrew. The word Sion itself is from an Egyptian derivation. Sion and C meaning land on pointing to the temple yes the temple of the sun my 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 hmm? oh. 
Okay. So in C means a land of drought or a barren place. But the meaning of the second Egyptian element has escaped recognition. On is the biblical name of the Egyptian holy city of Heliopolis. Yeah? So, how is it that in the Bible you have Sion, which is of original um, Egyptian derivation? Yes, and Sion, as I've shown you, is built of two elements, two words, and Si, which means land, and On, which refers to the Egyptian holy city of Heliopolis, which they, in the Hebrew is also called Bet Semes, the house of the sun. People, do you, I am, I'm trying to trigger you to think for a moment, okay? To think. So when we when we talking about Sion, Zion, Zion, Sion, it's actually connected with the ancient tradition, ancient tradition, and we don't realize it because we think Sion is is just of Hebrew origin, but it's not of Hebrew origin. It's of Egyptian origin. Yes. Eh, hey, crazy, eh? It's like, mm, what is this? What is this? <clears throat> okay, now, Temple of the Sun does not necessarily mean wickedness or idolatry of worshipping of a false god, etc. The European never really understood the African religious system. Yes, they never really understood the mind, the spiritual minds of Africans. Hebrews are Africans. Israelites are Africans. They never really understood it. So, in the interpretations of the African spiritual movements, reality, religion, yes, spiritual systems, they couldn't really interpret it as the African priests did. So they came up with errorous interpretations to form their own religions and their own spiritual systems. In the African mind, in the Congo mind, in the Bantu mind, in the mind of the ancient Hebrew Israelites, the sun, yes, the sun always represented the power of the Creator. The sun always represented what? Divinity. My goodness, hey, my time is up. I have to go in a few minutes. I didn't realize it. So, um, yeah. Now, let me take my notes. When we read Heb Hosea 11.1, 1, yes, Hosea 11.1, 1, it says, When Israel was a child, where? Where was he a child? In Egypt, right? Let me go there. When Israel was a child, Hosea 11. Where was Israel a child? Where was he a child? When Israel was a child, where? In Egypt, right? In Kemet. Yeah, right? In Kemet. 
Then I loved him. Who? Israel as a child. Where? In Kemet. As a child. Then I loved him. And called my son. You see? So Israel was as a child in Kemet. Israel was as a child. Let me emphasize it. As a child in Kemet. And then. He came out. As a son. See. Now in the book of Romans for example. We are told that those who are led by the spirit are called sons. Of God. Not children. Yeah? Not children milk suckers milk drinkers no not children but sons of God so there's a difference children are under education under instruction under tutories yeah but sons have become matured they mature, they grown, they have become responsible. Yes, they have become leaders. So he came out of Egypt as a son. We're talking about Israel. Yeah, of course, you know, in the New Testament it's also uh, quoted by Jesus. Because Jesus himself realized that he came out of Egypt, right? He came out of G Egypt. Now it's, no, Jesus does not quote it, but Matthew quoted. Jesus spent also his childhood where? In Egypt, right? So we see there the uh, analogy. Isaiah himself also spent his childhood in Egypt, as did Israel. Isolele. And then as he grew, as he matured, he came out. So Israel's connection is very strong and runs deep in the identity with Egypt. As a child, the people in its infant stadium received its fundamental and elementary instruction and spiritual teaching in Kemet, in Egypt. In a way, we can say that Egypt raised the child into maturity. Yes, we became mature in Egypt. And remember, the land, Gosem, right? And all of Egypt was filled with the Israelites, according to the book of Exodus. Yes, the, ex the book of Exodus tells us that Egypt was filled Okay, um, let's see, let me go there. I miscalculated the time, people. Um, I have to go in, uh, in a few minutes, but I will come back. And... Um, I will have to pick up my daughter from school. Today is my is my day to pick up my daughter from school, so I will have to go. But I will come back, and we will continue. So stay posted, right? Stay posted because we will continue. <clears throat> um, Exodus, right? Okay. What are we reading? Oh, right. Exodus 1, okay. And the children of Israel, Isolele, were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty 
and the land was filled with them. Yes, the land was filled with them. Remember, uh, at the time, we had kings and priests in Egypt. Joseph, for example, and his children, right? Joseph was a prince of Egypt. Yeah, governor. Governor. You can say, you know, second after the king. And his children were princes of Egypt. So we were not just slaves there, you know, as, as many people will try to emphasize. We're slaves, slaves. We were not just slaves, man. We were not just slaves in Egypt. We, we had positions in Egypt, great position in Egypt, influence in Egypt, you know. We were priests also in Egypt. We were teaching the spirituality of the Most High. Yes, to the Egyptian. That's what that's what uh, Joseph did. You know, it's what his children did. It's what we did when we came there. Uh, the family of Jacob. You understand? So we had huge influence in Egypt, and um, and we were considered actually a family. Yes, we were considered a family. That's why. In the book of Amos 9, it says, Are you not the same as the children of, of the Cushites? Bena Isolele. Are you not the same as the Bena Cushi? Yes. Amos 9. We were considered as a family. Joseph married the daughter of Potiphar, yeah? a high ranked nobleman in Egypt who was a priest. He married his daughter. His sons also married prince, princesses of Egypt. And when we came into Egypt, many of us also married Egyptian women. You, do you understand? Now, let's continue quickly. <clears throat> Listen. Um, now, when Israel was a child in Egypt, I loved him. You see, I loved him as a child in Egypt. And when he became a man, when he became a son, you know, a man, I brought him out of Egypt. So he received his... Uh, fundamental elementary instructions teachings in Kemet and then they came out as sons matured they grew they expanded you know they became great and mighty in Egypt and the land was filled with them so he was loved in Kemet. And was not Moses learned in all the ways, in all the wisdoms of Egypt? Was not Moses learned in all the ways of Egypt? According to the book of Acts 7. Moses was learned in all the ways. It means that he knew all the mystery schools and mystery, mystic teachings of Egypt because he was an initiate. Now, in um, Genesis 12, verse 10, we read the following. And there was a famine in the land. And Abraham went down into Egypt to sojourn, to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land, in the land of Canaan. Yes. And this becomes a repeating pattern in the life of the Israelites. When they are experiencing some catastrophe or drought, they will always go to 
Egypt. Yes, when they are having clashes with different uh, kingdoms, wars, they will trust in the mighty uh, army of Egypt. So they were always depending on Egypt to come to their aid. Why? <laughs> they, have, they have this brotherly relationship, right? Because Israel in the Bible was always depending on Egypt to save them, to build them out. And when they had droughts or economic problems, things like that, crisis, they would always go to Egypt. We see it with Abraham. We see it with Jacob. Yes, we yeah. see it, we see it with, with Isaac. Yes, always going that way. Okay. Ingeta. Kembu, Kembu, Kembu. You, you see, I know I'm not popular because of the things I teach and the things I say because many of you think it's it contradicts the Hebrew Israelite theology. But I don't deal with that theology. I deal with the truth of our ancestors, the truth of who we are. Yes, it's one thing I have learned, one thing I've learned, to always be open for continuous learning. As the Most High is revealing certain things, and as we are using our mental capacity, you know, this cerebral power to think, to reflect, okay, the things we read, the things we research, okay, coupled with the revelation of Tatanzama Pumutulendo and the guidance of the Muanan Semi. We will have to come to a realization that, hey, not, not everything is truth. What we have learned from church, you know, what we read in book, there's a lot, a lot of lot mysteries hidden in the book. And if you just read it with, with you know, carnal eyes, you will miss a lot of things. Like I've showed you, right? Even... Sion, Heliopolis, is hidden in the word Sion, the temple of the sun. It is it is hidden in the word Sion. Because Sion, Sion, is of Egyptian derivation. And it's not a Hebrew word. Yes, it's crazy, eh? So there are a lot of things which you think you know and because of our history of you know being taught the bible reading the bible and interpreting the bible according to the theology and paradigm of the kadian pemba according to their etymological thinking we are now interpreting the bible and we are not aware that that way of interpretation is actually based on what we have been taught. You see, so we must be brave enough to say to the Most High, I don't know anything. Teach me anew, you know. Teach me anew. Because we need to know who we are, and it's uh, it's 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 we are limiting ourselves if we only um, if we only use the Bible as our source of identification, right? Because only the Bible, because we know that the Bible is it's it's not the complete truthful word of the Creator of the Most High. As many claim, Bible is the holy book. It is the, you know, incorruptible word of the Most High. I don't want to disappoint you, but it's not. It's not the incorruptible holy book of the Most High. The Bible is just a Bible. It's just Biblia, a collection of books. Yes? 
and those collection of books in Egypt as the Greeks were coming there to create the manuscripts they fabricated some things you know they fabricated something so some stories are fabrication in the Bible oh, how can you say that Nabi Kephas are you crazy I'm telling you some stories in the book <laughs> Let me give an example. The Bible tells you where Abraham was buried, right? It tells you exactly Abraham was buried in this location because he bought a, a, a sepulcher from um, the king of... Um, yeah, he bought it from Abimelech, right? A sepulcher where he will be buried and his wife was buried and etc. But have people been able to identify that biblical location... Have people ever found the bones or the grave of Abraham, the grave of Isaac, the grave of Jacob, the grave of David, the grave, you know? Have they, have they found it? I'm just throwing it there. I'm just throwing out there, you know? <laughs> you, you think. You think on it. I'm not saying anything. I'm just throwing out there. But why is it? Now they can find the graves of all ancient civilizations, you know, ancient kings where they were buried and etc. But they cannot find the grave of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the patriarchs, nothing. Right? But the Bible gives us this tremendous, great, glorious history of the patriarch. But there is no archaeological proof of the graves there's nothing but when you go to Egypt they have they have the graves of almost all the pharaohs right all the pharaohs that's insane how is that possible the promised land there is not 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 that big right the state of Israel Palestina if that's the true holy land it is so where is it? More on that later. Okay, I have to go right now. To go and pick up my baby girl from school. So we will continue later in part two. And uh, we will look at Abraham. We will go into Abraham. We will go into the famine in the land of Canaan. And, and what the Bible tells us that Abraham went down into G Egypt to sojourn there for the famine was grievous in the land yes uh, we will go into that and I will um, yeah bring some more things on your plate that will make you think I, I hope to make you think yes crazy I know I'm not popular because of the things I teach because I'm not a Hebrew Israelite in you know as you are used to so by that I say Mbote Bandeko and may Congo rain I see you later stay posted for part two Ingeta